Hello and welcome to Micro Minute. My name is Marty Jopson and today what we're going to do is I'm going to be showing you some white blood cells under the microscope, specifically my white blood cells. Now previously, on a, on a previous Micro Minute, uh, we looked at some red blood cells that I, I bled for you and I showed you my red blood cells and there's a link below in the show notes that uh, will take you to that video and you can watch that one if you want. Uh, so we're going to do that and then we're going to do something else so that we uh, can see the white blood cells. So uh, quite a lot to do, so I better get on with it. Right, let's see. I'm going to uh, turn that off and show you my little desk camera. There you go. Now, I've got a whole new uh, tech set up today, so uh, apologies if it all goes pear-shaped and in theory this is streaming live on YouTube fingers crossed it's all working and in theory as well I can see your comments if you go into YouTube you can sort of put your little comments on anyway so let's get on with it uh, so what I need to do first is I need to uh, take some blood and smear it out on this glass slide here uh, so what I do is I do that and then we get a drop of blood you can see the blood. I'm bleeding for you. Don't say I don't do anything for you ever. And then I put that drop of blood on the slide about there. It's a bit of a small drop, actually, this one. And then I try and staunch the bleeding, because I don't want to bleed all over my lovely microscope. And then I need to smear that out so that we can uh, see individual cells. Like that. I'm going to get rid of that. And then this needs to dry out. And whilst it's drying out, I'm going to put it, I've got a little heater here, which heats the slide for me, and that helps things dry out. Whilst that's drying out, in fact, it's drying out very quickly, let me just show you what it looked like last time. This is what uh, red blood cells look like. This is a still, this is not live. This is what they look like uh, just under the microscope normally. So, uh, no staining, nothing. They don't really look particularly red, and they're just little round blobbies. Let's have a look then. Uh, this is now dried. I'm going to put it underneath the uh, microscope and I'm going to just have a quick look to see if I can see if we've done it a good job of this. Yep, it's a bit thick. This is a good section just here. So what I'm going to do is I'm now going to flip over and show you. There we go. It's doing its thing. And now if I turn that off... Ta-da! There we go. Blood cells, and I've cured the flicker. <laughs> so those are um, blood cells. Not very interesting. So what we need to do uh, is stain them up. Okay. And to stain them up, what I do is I have to use these three chemicals here. Now, the process, I'm going to do it first, and then I'm going to talk you through afterwards. I'm going to tell you what I've done so that I can just sort of get on with it, so to speak. So the first thing I have to do is I have to dunk it in this chemical here. This one is uh, this is methanol. I'm going to go in that way around. Uh, and I go in for the count of five. One, two, I'm running out of methanol. Three, four, five. And then I do that. I'll get rid of that chemical. And I'm just blotting it on the other side. This one is called eosin. That one we go in. One, two three, four, I do this one nice and slowly, five, okay, that one's eosin, that one goes in, get rid of that, don't want to drop these, spill them in a horrible mess on the kitchen table, and lastly, this one, this one's um, a bit like a chemical called toluidine blue, it's not actually toluidine blue, but it's close enough, one, two, three, four, Five, and I tend to overstain with this one, so I'm doing that quite quickly and get rid of that. And then what I need to do is I need to wash this slide, so I need to get rid of all the excess colour, so to speak. And I'll move that forward so you can sort of see what I'm doing. So I give it a bit of a wash, 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 wash. You tend to wash quite a lot of the blood that you've um, carefully, that I carefully bled out away. But um, that is unfortunately inevitable. Right, okay, that's enough of that. And then... Now, this is a technique that um, anybody that's worked in a haematology lab or in a hospital uh, lab will know all about because you do this all the time uh, in labs 
And normally you would take ages to do this, but I haven't got ages, so I'm doing it really, really quickly. And then I just have to blow it dry, and I'm going to do that away from the microphone. And then whilst that's drying off on my little hot plate there, let me talk to you about what I've actually been doing. So, what these chemicals do is they colour in the, uh, the blood cells. It's essentially colouring by numbers, in so much as each chemical doesn't just sort of paint the entire surface of everything. It only sticks to certain things. So this chemical, the eosin, which is sort of a pinky orangey colour, this one sticks to... I'm just keeping an eye on my slide. I think we've dried already. Is that dry? Yep, that's dry. Uh, this one will stain the inside of the cell. It's the stuff called the cytoplasm, okay? So it's just all the goo that's on the inside. And this one, the blue one, well, it stains a bunch of things, but the thing that we're interested in that it will stain is it will stain the nucleus. So inside every cell, there's like the sort of the control centre. It's kind of like the cell's brain. So we've got individual cells, and inside each cell, there's the control centre, the cell nucleus, where the DNA is and the genetic material and all that fun stuff is going on. So there we go. <clears throat> it's dried out already. Let's put it under here and see if I've got anything. Excellent. Yes. I have blood. And not only do I have blood, I've got white blood cells. Good, good, good. Which is always nice to know, isn't it? Um, and that's very boring seeing that kind of picture of my elbow whilst I'm doing this. And again, I'm just going to make sure that I can see something worth showing you before I do that. And then I have to just wait for the camera to adjust itself. Uh, there it goes. It's just, it's just white balancing and doing that. And then we're going to go... Uh, I'm going to turn that off and turn that off. And pow! There you go. We're into my blood. And now the blood starts to look more like sort of what you'd imagine blood looks like if you were to... Um, my mouse has not stopped working. Um, if you were to um, put it... Oops. Under a microscope. And in fact, when you, um, when you see sort of CSI uh, versions of uh, stained blood, this is normally what they look like. Because this is a very common blood stain. Um, there, there's all sorts of versions of, of staining blood. And they basically all do the same thing. And they colour the blood cells that sort of pinky, orangey colour there. So you can see these are the individual blood cells here and here and here. OK. And... Um, They've stained up nicely in pink because they're full of cytoplasm. And the cytoplasm stains with, remember, that one there. But there's no nucleus in a, in a blood cell. The blood cells don't have a nucleus, so there's no blue bit to it. And the reason they don't have a nucleus is because they don't need a nucleus. Um, and in fact, it gets in the way of them going down your capillaries. You know, I bled profusely from my fingertip because the capillaries, the very fine blood um, vessels allow blood to go through. And the only reason the blood can get through is because the blood can sort of bend and fold on itself. And the blood is actually kind of donut shaped like that with a flat bit in the middle. So it's not completely, uh, it's not like a donut with a hole in the middle. It's donut with a flat bit in the middle. And you can sort of see that here. If I zoom in on, on one of the blood, some of the blood cells there, look, you can see here, there's the thicker bit and then there's the thinner bit on the inside. And the thinner bit is stained less dark than the outside. But there are other things to be seen on this. Uh, and my picture has stopped doing anything there. There are other things you can see here. Uh, and I've lost my live feed. Let me just uh, check why that has happened. Ah, oh, there it is. It's come back. Um, uh, there are other things you can see there. Notably, this cell here. This cell here, and if I focus... On that very carefully. This cell is a white blood cell. White blood cells have cell nuclei. Uh, so that's what that big dark blue gobbity thing in the middle is. And they've got a little bit of cytoplasm. Oop, I've gone too far. A little bit of cytoplasm, but mostly it's cell nucleus. In fact, virtually the entire thing is cell nucleus. So here's a, uh, a white blood cell in focus there and if I, I zoom in on that a little bit like that we should be able to see that okay and you can see a halo of the goo but most of it's just one massive thing now this is what's known as 
a, um, what is this? This is a lymphocyte. This is one of the types of white blood cells. You have various types, different types of white blood cells. This type, um, this is one of the ones that either produces, um, it's either a T cell, which is a sort of a general organiser for the, for the, um, the immune system because it helps run your immune system. So obviously at the moment with COVID-19 going around, um, we're very keen to have lots of these and they help organise it. Then there are some that produce antibodies. Those are called B cells, uh, B cell lymphocytes. And there are also ones called natural killer cells and they kill cells that are infected with viruses. So obviously we need a lot of those at the moment. Um, there are other cells in here though, and I'm just gonna, what I'm gonna do is I noticed there is another type of white blood cell in this picture here. And again, it just has to do its little white balancey thing. And then I'm gonna zoom in here. And this cell here is a different type of white blood cell. This is a white blood cell called a neutrophil, and it looks like the cell nucleus has been all sort of smushed up, but that's normal, okay? Um, they're a bit peculiar, and again, I'll focus, a bit focusy. focusy. Um, they've got these lobes on their cell nucleus, which is how you know it's a neutrophil. They're very distinctive, and neutrophils are the most common types of white blood cells, and they go around your body, your blood, and they hoover up any bacteria or fungal spores they find. Uh, but mostly bacteria, and uh, that's what they're doing uh, in your blood. They're the sort of the vacuum cleaners of the blood. And those, by the way, they're probably platelets. And platelets are tiny little fragments of cell produced by the body, and they're what help clot your uh, blood. So when you get a scab, what makes the scab is these things. Little platelets, tiny, tiny, and there's another one there. Tiny, tiny, tiny little flecks in your blood. Right, um, I've done my time. So hopefully the tech setup worked. Um, join me on Friday when I'm going to be looking at liquid crystal displays. I'm going to do a, a little bit more with cross-polar microscopy. Uh, and it's uh, Materials Friday um, on uh, on Friday coming up. Join me at 12.30. Um, thanks very much for watching. Bye-bye.